It's exactly 10.30 p.m. Asmara time. Hello and thank you for joining us on Airy TV English News Broadcast. I'm Heaven Hans, your news anchor for this session, inviting you to stay with us and presenting you with our local and international news for today, Monday, the 2nd of December 2024. Do stay tuned once again and let's begin with the major headlines. World AIDS Day observed at national level. Congress of Teachers Association in the Southern Region. Wars in Ukraine and Gaza boost arms sales for major suppliers. And Norway plans to build a new NATO facility and its side of the arms. In our domestic news. World AIDS Day, observed globally on December 1st, was marked in Asmara yesterday for the 32nd time under the theme HIV has not gone away, take the right path to end it. During the ceremony held at Orta National Referral Hospital, Dr. Araya Burhana, Director of Communicable Diseases Control at the Ministry of Health, stated that due to the expansion of HIV AIDS treatment and increased public awareness, more citizens are seeking to know their HIV status. As a result, many people in need of antiviral medicines have become beneficiaries of these services. Dr. Aya further explained that annually about 200,000 citizens undergo voluntary counseling to understand their HIV status. Over 95% of pregnant women also receive regular counseling on HIV AIDS. Additionally, pregnant women diagnosed with the virus are receiving necessary medication and mother-to-child transmission of HIV is now rarely observed. Dr. Nonso G4, World Health Organization's representative in Eritrea, commended Eritrea's progress in controlling and curbing the disease. He also noted that the theme for the global observation this year is Take the right path, my health, my right. At the event, individuals living with HIV AIDS shared their personal experiences and awards were presented to the winners of a general knowledge competition among vehicle drivers. The National Teachers Association branch in the southern region held its eighth Congress and elected a new executive committee. The Congress was attended by around 200 teacher representatives. Mr. Tahaste Iyasu, chairman of the association branch, reported that various training programs had been organized in the region in recent years to enhance the capacity of teachers. Mr. Haptezgi Kidana, head of the education office in the region, on his part, emphasizes the importance of prioritizing teacher capacity development and ethics. He also called for the creation of a conducive environment to help teachers contribute effectively to the development of the teaching and learning process. Mr. Simon Mahari, chairman of the National Teachers Association, praised the outgoing executive committee for their contributions and wished success to the newly elected members. The participants engaged in extensive discussions on the report presented and adopted various recommendations, including organizing sustainable capacity building programs in collaboration with the Ministry of Education. The Teachers Association in the Southern Region has over 6,000 members. In related news, the Teachers Association in the Central Region provided training on English teaching methodology to 296 teachers in the region, including 181 female teachers. Mr. Dani al head of the association branch, explained that the training was part of the ongoing effort to improve the capacity of teachers. He urged the trainees to use the knowledge gained from the program to contribute to the development of the teaching and learning process. On another news, 60 disadvantaged girls from six schools in Adr Ayah Sabzon were provided with monetary support. Mr. Bayana Tasfai, head of the education office in the subzone, stated that the beneficiary students were from the schools of Dara, Igla, Safira, Dek Zersanai, Dagan, and Hawazu, and had been identified by their respective administrative areas. Ms. Mesalesh Lagesa, head of the National Union of Eritrean Women in the subzone, remarked that educated women are the backbone of their families and society. She called on all concerned institutions to encourage and support these students. 
Mr. Kiros Gebramariam, managing director in the SAB zone on his part, emphasized that supporting these advantaged students should not be the sole responsibility of the Ministry of Education. He urged all concerned institutions and the public to strengthen their participation in these efforts. This shall conclude our domestic news for this session. Do viewers, international ones follow after the short break. Welcome back. Sales by major arms suppliers were boosted last year by the wars in Ukraine and Gaza and tensions in Asia, with marked increases from manufacturers based in Russia and the Middle East, according to a report published today. Sales of arms and military services by the world's 100 largest arms companies totaled $632 billion last year, up by 4.2 percent, the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute said. According to the report, sales had declined in 2022 due to the inability of these global giants to meet the increase in demand, but many of them managed to restart their production in 2023. As a sign of this strong surge in demand, these 100 companies, for the first time, all individually achieved a turnover of more than a billion dollars last year. Smaller producers have been more efficient in meeting this new demand linked to the wars in Gaza and Ukraine, growing tensions in East Asia and rearmament programs in other regions, the Research Institute pointed out. At the world's leading producers, American groups recorded a 2.5% incre increase in their sales in 2023 and still represent half of global arms revenues, with 41 American companies among the top 100 in the world. On our last news. Norway plans to establish a new NATO Arctic and Amphibious Warfare Center where U.S., British and Dutch Marines will be trained during the heightened tensions with Russia, the Defense Ministry in Oslo announced it on Friday. The new hub will be created in the municipality of Sarisia, north of Lofoten in Norway's Arctic, some several hundred kilometers at the crow flies from Russia's strategic port, Murmansk, which is a key military and naval base. The NATO members' facility will house several hundred soldiers and is expected to become fully operational in 2026. The new centre will have closed links with several nearby military facilities, which Norway claims will be extremely useful for the NATO. The announcement comes after the Norwegian government presented a plan this spring for a historic increase in defence spending, with the aim of spending $54 billion on the military from 2024 to 2036. As part of the package, Oslo also wants to acquire its first long-range air defence system and expand the army from one to three brigades, while boosting the size of the Home Guard to 45,000 troops. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov signaled this September that Moscow will check NATO's expansionist ambitions in the region. This concludes our news for this session. Dear viewers, time for a quick recap of the major headlines. World AIDS Day observed at national level. Congress of Teachers Association in the Southern Region. Wars in Ukraine and Gaza boost arms sales for major suppliers. And Norway plans to build new NATO facility in its side of the Arctic. This was The World on Monday with Airy TV English News Broadcast. Dear viewers, thank you for joining. It's officially a goodbye from us.